welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we will be creating a watercolor texture brush in Photoshop. And these texture brushes are super handy because it makes integrating textures like watercolor textures far quicker and it reduces your file sizes too. So we're gonna create this brush from a watercolor texture out of one of my watercolor texture kits. And then I'm gonna show you how to also stamp it like you see on screen so it's one flat color and also how to kind of recolor it too so you can add in any kind of color you'd like that kind of simulates uh, the real watercolor texture as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up a watercolor texture. The texture that I'm using is from my watercolor texture kit volume three. A lot of these textures that I have in here um, are super vibrant and they've got a lot of variation in texture. So when you're choosing the watercolor texture that you wanna use, make sure like, you can see these really hard lines right here which are going to look really nice when you convert this into a brush and there's a bunch of different color variation as well so once we um, create the brush out of it you have to desaturate the color so if you have a lot of color variations you're going to get some nice um, black and white and gray areas throughout so there's just going to be a lot of variation it's really going to hit home that it's a watercolor texture so as you can see we've got a whole bunch of them within this kit um, you want to kind of stay away from these softer textures because they're not going to show up as well. But some of the textures like this one, you can see we've got a, some nice veining going on. There's a ton of variation throughout this one. And these really dark spots and really light spots will work very, very well for our texture brush. Same thing with this one. You can see we've got a bunch of different edges happening here. There's a nice little burst effect here. So just the more variation you have, the more dynamic and interesting your textures will come out looking. Okay, so we're gonna grab this one. This is number 29 out of my watercolor texture kit, volume three, and it is a transparent PNG, so you can see the background is entirely removed. That part is very important. I have a course on how to remove that background color from your texture so you don't have any paper showing so you can actually put this texture on any color that you choose um, so I'll leave a link in the video description and on screen to that course if you'd like to check it out okay so I'm gonna grab this one and I'm just going to click on it and drag it right into Photoshop because we want to use it at its original size because that's as large as it is available we don't want to stretch our pixels at all so just bring the texture right in just as it is and from here we want to desaturate the texture so we're gonna use a layer adjustment this is a non-destructive form of editing so we can go back and change things later on nothing is permanently applied until we merge everything together so your adjustments layer is right here if you don't see it you can get to it by going window adjustments and it'll pop open and we're just gonna click right here on this hue saturation slider and we're gonna desaturate this entire thing so you can see it's pretty flat now we've got it all white and black basically and we want to bump up how dark our darks are and how light our lights are and we can do that by using our levels and our brightness contrast adjustments so first we're gonna grab our levels which is right here so click on that the further right you slide this black slider the darker your darks will get the further left you slide this white slider the lighter the lights will become so we just want a good interesting mix of darks and lights and a little in between so I'm gonna drag this over and you can see my darks are getting pretty dark and then I'm gonna drag my white I don't want to entirely remove all of the white or make things too white but I'm getting some really nice contrast right now so now I'm gonna grab my brightness contrast and just up my contrast a little bit and that's looking really good so something around here where you've got a lot of variation is right where we want to be that's our sweet spot so the next thing I'm gonna do is group all of these together so I'm gonna hold shift and then click on the top one and then you can hit command G or control G on a PC to group them together now I have all of my layers together, nice and tidy. So if I ever wanna come back to these later and change these adjustments, all I have to do is double click here and my settings are still saved. So it's really nice for you to always have one group that has all of your settings. I'm going to create another group. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag. And this is my copy. I'm gonna shut off my original and I'm gonna merge this one together. So we're gonna, all those adjustments that we just applied to our original, we're gonna make them permanent right now, but we still have our original work right here that we can access later if we need it. So I'm gonna right click and choose Merge Group. And with this all merged, now we're gonna come up here and go Edit, Define Brush Preset, and we're just gonna call this one Big Watercolor and hit okay. 
All right, so now we're going to create a brand new document. So I'm going to go File New, and I just happen to have my settings set at 1,000 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels high. I've got a resolution of 300 PPI, and my color mode's RGB. But this part, just choose whatever you feel comfortable with or whatever document you want to use this in. This is not important at all to the grand scheme of things. So I'm just going to hit OK, and now I have this blank document. So first I'm going to apply a background color. I've got this kind of light blue color that I'm using. Um, so this is the color build for this. So all I'm going to do is hit Command Delete or Control Backspace on a PC, and that's the keyboard shortcut to apply your background color right here to your artboard as a fill. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna brush our watercolor brush. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard, and if I toggle this down all the way to the bottom, this should be the brush that you just created. And when I hover over here, it's too big for you to even see right now, so if I hit my open bracket key on my keyboard, that will reduce the size of it, and now you can see the brush appearing. If I want it to be larger, I can just increase it by hitting my close bracket key on my keyboard. So pretty easy. All right, so this will stamp whatever color I have in my foreground, which is right here. So it's gonna stamp this dark blue color. So if I just click once, you can see I've got that right there. And if I wanted a different part of it, I could stamp it here. If I wanted it smaller, so the entire thing is contained on the artboard, I can just do that as well. So you can see that's our original. So it's looking really good. Um, I'm gonna bump this back up so I can have it kind of bleed off the top right here. So I'm just gonna stamp it, and that's all fine and good, and you can have and use this as a one color texture, but if you wanna apply a little bit of color to it to simulate a real watercolor with color variation, we're gonna double click on our layer to create a new layer style, and you're just gonna come over here to Gradient Overlay. And when this pops up, we're gonna change our style to Radial right here, and we're gonna to toggle this gradient down, and I'm going to choose a two color right here, and then I'm gonna change it if I click on this bottom color node, you can see the color shows up right here, and if I click on the color, now I can define it right here. So a purple goes pretty well with my light blue right here, so I'm gonna keep this a nice purple. And then for the orange, if I just click here and click here again, a green looks pretty good or a dark blue. Let's see what looks good here. I think I'm gonna go with maybe, let's see what a pink looks like. Nice and bright. Ooh, the red looks good. All right, so we're gonna keep that just like that. And if I hit okay and hit okay, if I want my purple to be larger since it's in the center, I can just scale this up like that, and then if I click over here, I can move it around so you can see where the purple goes. I'm dragging where the purple goes. So you can actually customize this even further by dragging where your gradient overlay kind of hits within your texture. And when you're all happy with everything, just hit OK, and you are all set. So that is how to create a watercolor texture brush in Photoshop. If you'd like to use this brush later on, I have an entire tutorial on how to save out brushes and pattern swatches in Illustrator and Photoshop. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description to that tutorial. Essentially, you're gonna come over to your brushes your brush presets right here. You're gonna to toggle this little icon down and you're gonna save your brushes right here. And then when you wanna use them again, you can load them in right here. But there's a, I have a full tutorial on that, so definitely feel free to check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And I will leave the links to the watercolor texture kits in the video description if you'd like to go check those out, as well as that course that teaches how to cut out watercolor textures from their backgrounds. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.